Uh, you know, so I am not a believer in gradualism, that you try to move slowly, be risk averse. Uh, I'm really, uh, take chances, move quickly, capitalize your risk, uh, and, see, and seek change. And so that's really what's, even though I've had the, a one-line resume and had the same job since I was 22, there is never a day that is the same. The type of plays that people were going to uh, is forever energizing for me. So there's emotional roller coasters that come with finances, that come with individuals, that come with trends in society, that come with the political nature within which we work and uh, philanthropies, uh, you know, ebbs and flows. But um, it's all been the mission of Mixed Blood is really what binds everybody. The, and everybody interprets it differently. We've never been dogmatic. Here's what our mission means. So everybody interprets it differently, and yet everybody believes in it. Uh, and so that's what's been fantastic. And our notion is, um, at least my, I was raised on the idea, while it's great to align oneself with community, whether it's a cultural community, whether it's a professional community, whether it's a geographic community, it's more important to create community. And so that's really where we are in Cedar Riverside. Um, the community in which we live, the population of the community, is really reflective of the mission of the organization. So going to a show at the Mixed Blood Theater is partly the neighborhood through which you travel to get to the theater, the people that sit next to you while you're watching the shows, and then what goes on on stage. And if we haven't succeeded in all three of those, we're probably not succeeding. You know, we have a core value of being predictably unpredictable. And so that just is always, you know, it sort of makes part of my job be surprising. Uh, and that's really quite freeing and exciting. Uh, you know, so, yeah, there's just a lot about how the organization has come to be who it is with its board of directors that really leads us into the future, that was courageous in tackling radical hospitality. We brought in some MBA students to sort of analyze what we might expect uh, as we undertook uh, this new era of radical hospitality. And they said, don't expect too much change at first, maybe a 10% change in the first year. Well, on the first day of the first show of the first season, we had moved farther along than they thought we would have at the end of three years. So it's just it, it, what we're doing is uncharted territory, which is fantastic. And the analytical tools, our general model of operating is plan, do, analyze, plan again, and do again. So it's constantly uh, reinventing ourselves on a daily and yearly basis in exciting ways. So it never, I promise it never gets boring. Uh, but it's a great body of people that all believe in something in common about the way the world should be. We don't try to present the world on stage as it is or as it was, but how we'd like it to be. And that's a pretty exciting job to have. So do you feel like um, a civic leader in that way? I mean, do you feel like you're leading this community? Do you feel yourself? Uh, I feel like the organization has taken a position that is unlike others, that we're part of a bigger field and a bigger sector. And, you know, the thing is that Social change doesn't always happen because a single individual or a single organization does a single thing, but rather if individuals and organizations and government entities and nonprofits work in tandem to try to, uh, they can become the straw that breaks the camel's back, whatever that, you know, social melees that, that is that camel's back that you're trying to accomplish. And that's been the great part is being able to create ripple effects of social change by partnering with so many different individuals and organizations uh, in education and philanthropy and government, uh, you know, in corporate America and social service agencies. Uh, we are all aligned. And, the, and nonprofits in general, by their very nature, are supposed to be an extension of the government. I know that sounds ridiculous, but the government says, there's those things that the populace needs that we don't have the wherewithal to provide. So we're going to give this tax incentive. You don't have to pay taxes. People can give you money without and take a deduction for it uh, because you're doing what we think the populace needs to get done. So depending on who's in charge of the government, we either take pride or less uh, in that role as an extension of the government. But uh, who we are as a nonprofit, who we are as a sector, uh, and then who we are as individuals are all really tied together in fascinating ways. Um, what, are, what do you think that it means to be in a community or to create that community? 
You know, I, I will tell you an interesting story. There is a program officer at the McKnight Foundation, one of our great philanthropic leaders and believers in social change, that tries to uh, replace the word people every time someone uses community because it's gotten to be a little bit of an amorphous word. And so I've tried that, and it has not worked for me. Every time people ask me about community, I try to replace it with people, and it doesn't, it doesn't quite gel. But I really appreciate that notion that communities are groups of people that are bound together. Mixed blood, you know, uh, focuses on pluralism, and really pluralism, I'm getting to the answer to your question, is that healthy tension between diversity and unity, unity being a body of people with a common uh, Stay, you know, common thinking and diversity being a body of people uh, that are comprised of people with differences. So if you have common thinking and a body of different people and those things come together, that's successful pluralism. And I think that's when, to, to me, that defines community when you actually get those things working together. People thinking alike and people with difference create community.